Hey everyone, welcome to episode four and the final episode of this mini series about designing a modern barn. And so if you haven't seen the first three episodes, be sure to check them out. There'll be a link below. The first episode, we talked about modeling a massing diagram and taking a party diagram and making a mass of it and almost using it like a sketch model uh, to some extent within Revit as well as building some topography, of course. In the second video, uh, we actually built a Revit model from that mass. So we converted that mass to uh, walls, doors, windows, and, and so on and so forth, um, which we called sort of a schematic design model. And then in the third video, we took that and we pulled it into twin motion to generate some renderings in a real-time scene to present to our client. And so in this final video, we're actually going to do some construction documents. It's something that I know uh, we don't talk about a lot because it's such an important part of the process. Um, I did want to make sure that uh, we highlighted some of it here. When reviewing the footage, <laughs> I recorded myself basically from start to finish uh, doing the entire set of construction documents. Obviously, there's a lot of there's hours and hours of dimensioning and text and all that stuff. And so what I wanted to do instead of making an eight hour long video of me just sitting there doing nothing but annotating and so on and so forth. What I did is I wanted to make sure that I highlighted just some tips and tricks and to give you an idea of some of the things that I do when I'm putting together a set of drawings. So with that, I think it's time to just jump right in and uh, let's get into it. So you'll see we're in a floor plan view here. And one thing that I do like to do when it comes to especially residential um, wood framing is um, I will model a lot of the framing. Um, in this project, I didn't do all of the framing, but I did quite a bit of it. Um, in some projects, I'll actually do all of the framing, um, uh, mainly because it, it helps with the documentation, but it also helps you sort of understand the details in the wall sections as you're actually trying to develop them. By having the three-dimensional models there, super helpful and it's really easy to do. So what I'm doing here is just putting in a, a beam system um, of two by 12s, I believe it is. And you saw there was a column there. So there's the beam system. Um, this design actually has changed already uh, multiple times from the iteration here. So uh, that floor doesn't have an opening and those stairs are pulled out. But um, again, the idea here is that by modeling some of the key components of the wood framing, which doesn't take a lot of time, um, what you can do is you can start to study some of those wall sections and how the different systems interact. Here I'm just lowering the beam system, adding a, a, a beam at the edge. And now you can see this is kind of what the beam system looks like. Now I'm going to add my three two by beams. Um, this is prior to, to actually physically designing what those beams are going to be. I believe currently now these are actually two 11 and 7 8 inch um, LVLs um, with a with with columns and there's an opening there now. But um, you'll see here right now I'm just doing a couple columns with um, three two by 12s, I think at the time. Now going back to the floor plan. I'm just modifying the uh, poche. I had a much darker wall poche for the presentation drawings. Um, here, I'm actually just um, modifying my my view template to make it a little less dark of a gray. <laughs> uh, just adjusting the stair to meet some of the some of the little tweaks that we've made at the floor plan. For this particular project, I ended up using the gravel base under the slab as my pad, um, and so I'm just kind of adjusting that because things flexed. You can do a lot of different things. If you're using Revit 2024 now, then you don't have pads anyways, so there's a different option for it. But um, if you're using 23 or below, um, people use you know a thin slab pad. Sometimes they use the the concrete itself as the pad. A lot of times, I like to use the the crushed stone as my pad, especially on a slab on grade project. And so here, I'm just kind of adjusting that. Now you can see there it is cutting into it. The slabs haunched over the edge of the uh, of the wall. Here is a really cool tip. This is a, a generic or a family that I made um, that you can see shows it's a bracket above. And what I'm doing here is I'm just using the line weight tool and selecting the whole family and showing overhead. Um, I really wanted that to show below um, just because of the, the reference to it. Um, and so by doing that, the other thing I'm doing here is I'm doing an underlay of the level above and I'm using the overhead line work. So I'm using the line work tool and I'm selecting the roof. So when you do an underlay, you can actually select the edges, turn the underlay off, and then you can actually see those lines. And what's great about that is if you modify that roof, it's actually the edge of the physical roof above. So it will update with it. So instead of actually drafting detail items and detail, I mean, detail lines to represent the roof above, 
this is a great tip. So it's turn on the underlay of the level above so you can see the roofs. Use the line weight tool or line work, which is LW on the keyboard, to click, click, click the edges. And then um, you can actually see them in your floor plan below, but they're actually representative of the 3D object above. And now here I'm just going to zip through a whole bunch of uh, dimensioning. Some tips for dimensioning that I like to say is, is less about Revit and more about just construction, um, which is when, when you're dimensioning a project, um, just think about if you were out there trying to lay it out so i you know if i had to go out and build this by myself no 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 you know no discussion with anyone else um do i have enough information to actually lay out the project and so that's usually what i keep in mind when i'm doing dimensioning um, obviously with revit it's great you can use continuous strings which is super helpful and you can see i'm just kind of hitting certain dimensions here going upstairs uh just adding some text notes um just to explain open to below adding some dimensions so same idea here. You can see I turned on the roof above, so I'm on the second floor um, with using underlay. I using the line work tool, which is LW, and I'm clicking the edges of the roof. And then when I turn off the underlay, that line work, the overhead lines, the dash actually remains. And remember, it's the actual edge of the roof, so it will update if the roof updates. Here I'm using a plan region to show windows that are off um, in an awkward location as far as the cut is concerned. So for those of you that don't know what that is, under the View tab, there's a tool called Plan Region, and that allows you to change the cut plane and the view range of specific areas of your plan. So in this case, for example, the windows were at an awkward location where they, they it wouldn't make sense to change the cut plane to meet the windows, and so I'm using the Plan Region to actually make it so you can see the windows. Another idea using the Line Work tool is if you want to show the walls below in a roof plan, for example, um, what I'm doing here is I just went to a wireframe. So I just converted my view to wireframe real fast. I'm using the line work tool to, again, pick the edges of my walls below. And then I'm just turning it back to hidden line. And then the, the line work, the dash lines actually show. Adding a couple ceilings in the ceiling plan here. Just doing a quick gypsum board ceiling. So again, the sections make sense, but also um, if I needed it for quantities and so on and so forth, as well as the graphics of the ceiling plan, of course. So there's my gypsum ceiling all right now we're going to start looking at the building sections here uh depending on how i do this i may i may do a, a call out from a, a, a building section like i'm doing here for the wall section or i may just draw a wall section and pull a plan view i kind of like having the reference especially for a small scale residential like this the reference of the building sections and then the wall section on the same page and so that's kind of what i did here and you can see i'm pulling out the wall section as I mentioned before, a lot of times I'll actually model even these the sill plates and sometimes even the studs and so on and so forth, depending on the project. Here I did not do the wall, the wall framing modeling, and so I'm actually using detail items. You'll notice in my template I already have all of these things um, good to go. Um, if you're interested in checking out the template, by the way, uh, check out the link below. Uh, as a community member in the BIM After Dark community, you have access to my residential template as well as a sample file, which is awesome. Um, throwing in some insulation here. The key that I want you to take away from wall sections as I'm doing a lot of annotating over it, the one thing you'll notice is the model stays on, okay? I will always leave the model on and I will use as much of the model as I can for the wall section. Yes, graphically, you may want to hide and move things and so on and so forth, but no matter what, please, whatever you do, leave the model on. Okay, the importance of the coordination between your wall section and the three-dimensional model elements moving and adjusting is invaluable okay so please whatever you do don't click the display model don't ever flip that to do not see model or do not show model um, what i'm doing here is i'm just grabbing a whole bunch of uh two-dimensional graphic information from another project um that uh that just makes sense on this one here i know a lot of people will ask about tags and keynotes and fancy detailing and so on and so forth um, and I do have some of that built into certain templates and certain uses um, for these one-off residential projects it's just not worth it um, sometimes to to implement those type of systems for me personally. Um, I am not at all saying that keynotes and smart details are not a great way to go. Um, just for me personally, this is this is what it is right now is we've got um, detail items um, as well as um, text, text, uh, simple text. Um, obviously, I'm going to use um, as many detail items and smart families as possible. Um, but but you can see what I'm doing here is just taking taking notes and examples from a, a, a similar project and just pulling them over because why not? Right. It's especially if it's just two, 2D information. But you'll notice that the the slab, the the um, 
the crushed stone, the wall, the footing, the the actual foundation wall, the walls above, the floors, the roof, all of that stuff are model elements, okay? So even though I'm drafting on top of model elements, I'm leaving them on and they're part of the detail. That's so important because let's say this building moved two feet or the floor shifted in two inches because of a design change or something like that. Guess what? Your detail's wrong. Uh, here's a perfect example. The, the footing was too deep for some reason as I was going along. So what did I do? I modified the walls, the wall footings, and noticed that right away I could tell I needed to update my detail, right? If this was if this was just an all two-dimensional wall section and I modified the wall, the out exterior, uh, the foundation wall to be, you know, two feet less, for example, that wall section wouldn't have reflected it. Yeah, I have to know and go back to it, but you get the idea. Why not take advantage of the fact that we're using this tool called BIM and the fact that it updates everywhere, right? Just cleaning up some text notes. Now it's time to pull some more notes at the next floor level, which has some strapping notes and some header notes and so on and so forth. Um, that again, they're pretty uniform as far as, uh, you know, two by balloon stick framing, whatever you want to call it. Um, and so I'm just going to pull those over. So remember what you're looking at there, the, the kick, or the, the, the studs, um, are not modeled, but the walls there, the, the flooring is actually all modeled. So I didn't have to put those as detail items in there. So you have this nice balance between detail items and three dimensional models. At this stage of the project, just the upper mezzanine level was an insulated box. It's different now, but uh, that's kind of what I was uh, what I wanted to make uh, known here is that we have sort of an insulated box above and the whole garage itself was not insulated. Throwing in some hurricane clips and then all the notes for the roof. Some more notes. We got some nice strapping and hurricane clip notes and all that good stuff that we need around here. I'm just cleaning up the edge of the roof here again using the 3D model. So this is the 3D model you're seeing the edges here. And finally, we're going to check out check out the structural uh, sheet where I'm just verifying all the foundation dimensions, adding a couple generic notes uh, that I usually use for the found for typical um, typical residential uh, structures. And then I'm just flipping through all the sheets to make sure they look good. So you can see here's the here's the whole set of sheets. And then I'll print that thing to PDF. And uh, and we've got ourselves a set of drawings. <laughs> so I know that was a lot of stuff condensed into a small uh, video, but I really wanted to just finish up the process that you guys have seen unfold and show you some tips and tricks along the way. Obviously, construction documents is an area where I could probably do an entire 15 video series uh, on just that alone. For this specific project, I wanted to highlight some of the interesting things um, as well as you know, go through some of the tips and tricks I use on a, on a daily basis. The other thing I should mention to you guys is um, it's kind of interesting if you've never done this before. I mean, it's, it's potentially worth it. If you record yourself working and then go back and watch some of the things you do, it's really interesting. <laughs> and so as an exercise to, to honestly make yourself better um, and then find potential inefficiencies or areas where, you know, like you look back on it, you're like, wow, I could have done you know this instead of that. Um, it actually has been a learning experience for me to realize that sometimes when you're under the gun, doing your thing, just need to get something out the door. It's really easy to forget sometimes the big picture and, and do some inefficient things. So it is what it is. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this. I hope you enjoyed this series. I hope you enjoyed this video where I walk through construction documents and creating those. Um, thank you for, for, for following along on this little series. If you really enjoyed it, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Thank you to Autodesk for supporting it. And if you want to continue the conversation as well as check out the template and sample files and all that from this particular series and all of my series and tutorials, head on over to community.bimafterdark.com and I'll see you over there. So with that, I want to bid you guys adieu. Cheers. See you soon.